this talk, I'm going to present the Iron Track Truck Driver Validation Challenge. Particularly, this talk is focused on the results obtained so far and on the next steps. I have no financial interest to declare. The gap in special resolution and indirect nature of the measure signal make diffusion MRI tractography prone to reconstruction errors. Previous validation challenges have addressed the accuracy of tractography techniques and shown its limitations in correctly reconstructing white matter structures. Prior challenges, however, use diffusion MRI data that are either limited spatial resolution or that have been acquired with a single low B value, limiting the number of methods and acquisition schemes to be assessed. In particular, it is not clear whether the conclusions drawn from these challenges are applicable to widely available acquisition schemes like the HCP. Also, these challenges often compare ground truth and diffusion MRI in different brains. The Iron Track Challenge seeks to address this gap by investigating which methods and processing strategies lead to optimal tractography accuracy for the two-shell HCP acquisition scheme, and whether those methods could achieve even higher accuracy with a different acquisition scheme by widening the number of methods and acquisition schemes to be tested. For this reason, this challenge has some unique characteristics compared to previous challenges. It has data from both a training and a validation case, which allows to evaluate how two different anatomical profiles can affect the accuracy of tractography and assess consistency of methods across different anatomical scenarios. We made available data with different diffusion schemes, which allows to evaluate a wider range of methods, compare differences across sampling schemes and evaluate optimal methods for specific acquisition schemes, like for example, the HCP lifespan acquisition scheme. We asked participants to upload tractography results obtained at multiple thresholds, so that for each tractography volume, true and false positive rates were computed by voxel-wise comparison to the tracer data. This allows to better investigate the sensitivity specificity trade-off and compare the different methods at the same false positive rate threshold. More in details, for this challenge, we had data from two monkey brains that served as a training and a validation case. For both of these, we had in vivo tracing data from two different injection sites in the anterior frontal cortex and ventrolateral prefrontal cortex, respectively. We also had ex vivo diffusion MRI acquired 0.7 mm isotropic resolution that we distributed both in the acquired DSI version and in the resampled HCP version, for which we used the two shells of the lifespan HCP studies adjusted to achieve the same diffusion contrast in a fixed brain. Data were shared through the QMENTA platform at two different time points. We first shared the training dataset that participants could use to test and optimize their methods on the basis of the score they could visualize on the QMENTA platform. Only in a second moment did we release the validation data, and this time participants were blind to their score. We then evaluated all final submissions and ranked them differently on the basis of the scheme used. We had 30 teams registering to the challenge with a total of 226 submissions, of which 187 training and 39 validation. However, we then had a final number of 17 submissions for the validation data from 12 teams. Participants used both common off-the-shelf algorithms and more in-house developed algorithms that include a spherical deconvolution, GQI, and compartment models. We had roughly an equal number of probabilistic and deterministic tractography algorithms. Here I'm showing the ROC curves for all the submissions for the HCP acquisition scheme for the training case. And these are the overlaid ROC curves for the DSI acquisition scheme. Although there obviously is a trade-off between true and false positive reconstructions, most submissions achieve 80% sensitivity within 30% false positive rate. Now, these are the results for the validation case for the HCP acquisition scheme, and again for the DSI acquisition scheme. In the validation case, many submissions remain below the 80% sensitivity gap. For both training and validation case, we look at the accuracy, measure as the error under the curve, for different settings across submissions. Overall, accuracy is higher for the DSI acquisition scheme. Interestingly, while both probabilistic and deterministic tractography and most methods seem to perform fairly similar for the training data, 
probabilistic truck therapy and spherical deconvolution show much higher accuracy in a validation case. And the same is true for the use of additional masks to constrain tractography. Having tractography results at different thresholds allowed us to compare the different submissions at the same false positive rate. To investigate sensitivity in more detail, we try to understand where true positive and false negative tractography reconstructions were located in the validation case. We label the main white matter bundles the tracing was projecting to indicated here by the different color arrows, and computed the rate of true positive voxel for each bundle for each submission at the same false positive rate. Here are the results for all the teams for the submissions that use the DSI acquisition scheme on the top and the HCP acquisition scheme on the bottom. Box plots show the overall true positive rate for each team, and the different colors represent the different bundles. On a positive note, most submissions correctly reconstructed bundles close to the injection point, while most of them failed to correctly recover bundles far from the injection point and located at branching regions. To conclude, tuning the tractography analysis improves sensitivity. However, optimizing data analysis with respect to one injection site does not guarantee optimality for another. Some methods seem to be more robust than others, as they could achieve consistently high performance in both datasets. The DSI acquisition scheme led to higher accuracy overall. However, it's worth noticing that when analysis methods are optimized, the HCP acquisition scheme may achieve similar accuracy as a more demanding acquisition scheme. A combination of probabilistic tractography constrained spherical deconvolution and the use of additional mass to constrain tractography provided the highest sensitivity values and also resulted the best method for the HCP acquisition scheme. When looking at submission for the same false positive rate, we can see false negatives across all submissions, but mostly located at branching regions. Across submissions, two strategies seem to significantly improve results accuracy additional post-processing filtering, and the use of additional masks based on atomical knowledge to constrain tractography. For our next steps, we want to know what would happen if all the participants applied these winning strategies. So we're asking participants to reprocess their data using these processing steps. Additional future steps will include widening the methods and acquisition schemes used in order to understand which steps are mostly affecting tractography reconstruction accuracy. I would like to acknowledge all the teams that participated in the challenge, the winning team from the EPFL in Lausanne, all the people who helped in the data collection and distribution, and obviously our monkey trophy and Moscow. The challenge has just reopened and you can register following this link.